minus 1, and you have positive potential very far out, you've got to go through a surface where it's zero. And so there is here a surface, I still have put it in blue, which is actually everywhere on this surface, the potential is zero. Is the electric field zero there? Absolutely not. Electric field should not be confused with potential. What it means is that if you take a test charge in your pocket and you come from infinity and you walk to that surface, that by the time you have reached that surface, you've done zero work. That's what it means. That the potential is zero. There is here one point, which we discussed earlier in my lectures, where the electric field is zero. The potential is not zero there. The potential is definitely positive here. Because here was the zero surface. Here is a really positive surface. And this is a positive surface. So the potential is positive. However, if you reach that point, there's no force on your charge. So that means electric field is zero. It is not so easy, of course, to calculate these surfaces. Maxwell was capable of doing that 110 years ago. And nowadays, we can do that very easily with computers. Equipotential surfaces, which have different values, can never intersect. Plus 5 volt surface can never intersect with a plus 3 or a minus 1. And you think about why that is. Why that is. It would be a total violation of the conservation of energy. So equipotential surfaces, different values, can never intersect. All right. So you've seen that for the various charge configurations, the equipotential surfaces have very complicated shapes and cannot always be calculated in a very easy way. Now comes the question, why do we introduce electric potentials? Who needs them? And who needs equipotential surfaces? Isn't it true that if we know the electric field vectors everywhere in space, that that determines uniquely how charges will move, what acceleration they will obtain? That means how their kinetic energy will change. And the answer is, yeah. If you know the electric field everywhere in space, sure. Then you can predict everything that happens with a charge in that field. But there are examples where the electric fields are so incredibly complicated that it is easier to work with equipotentials. Because the change in kinetic energy, as I will discuss now, really depends only on the change in the potential when you go from one point to another. So you will see very shortly that sometimes, if you're only interested in change of kinetic energy and not necessarily interested in the details of the trajectory, then equipotentials come in very handy. Never confuse U, which is electrostatic potential energy, with V, which is electric potential. This has unit joules, and this has unit joules per coulomb, which we call volts. If I have a collection of charges, pluses and minuses, U has only one value. It is the work that I have to do to put all these crazy charges exactly where they are. But the electric potential is different here, from there, from there, to there, to there, to there. If you're very close to a plus charge, you can be sure that the potential is positive. If you're very close to a, a negative charge, you can be sure that the potential is negative. But U has only one number, only one value. They're both scalars. Don't confuse one with the other. In a gravitational field, matter, like a piece of chalk, wants to go from high potential to low potential. If I just release it with zero speed, there it goes. High potential to low potential. In analogy, positive charges will also go from a high electric potential to a low electric potential. And of course, this is unique for electricity, negative charges will go from a low potential to a high electric potential. Suppose I had a position A, 
in space, and I had another position B, and I specify the potentials. So here, we have A, potential is VA, and here we have point B, where the potential is VB. By definition, the potential of VA, as we discussed before, is the integral, by the way, if these are separated by some random distance r, whatever you want. So the potential of A is defined as the integral in going from A to infinity of E dot dr. That is the definition of the potential of A. There's an E here, which is force per unit charge. So it is not work. If they were forced dr, it would be work, but it is force per unit charge that makes it E. So the potential of B, for definition, is the integral from B to infinity of E dot dr. And so therefore, the potential difference between point A and B, VA minus VB, equals the integral from A to B of E dot dr. And for reasons that I still don't understand after having been in this business for a long time, books will always tell you they reverse VA and B, so they give you VB, VB minus VA, and then they say, well, we have to put a minus sign in front of the uh, integral, the same thing. So books always give it to you in this form. But it is exactly the same. I hope you realize that. This is the two equations that I have here are the same. VA minus VB is the integral from A to B of E dot dr. If I flip this over, then all I have to do is put a minus sign here, and the two are identical. Notice that if there is no electric field between A and B, they have the same potential, of course. Because when you march from A to B with a charge in your pocket, no work is done, so the potential remains the same. I will change this dr to a different symbol, which I call dl. 